yeah. um, just a reminder, everyone, this is all being recorded. So you'll get links to the recordings um, and they will most likely be posted. They'll be posted on our training calendar page as well. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Angel. All right. Good morning, everybody. Happy whatever today is. I think it's Thursday. I'm <laughs> not really sure. Uh, so welcome to the training. We're going to be talking today about uh, Just for Kids, which you are somewhat new to at this point. Um, but you've had films on demand for quite a while now. So I think that some of the kind of feel of the, the controls and the things that you could do with it uh, should be pretty familiar. Most of it is, is very similar. Uh, there are a few things that are that are different. We'll talk about some of the things that I think you will probably want to you know jump right into and, and start doing right away. And then we'll also try to do kind of an overview of the content and, and just kind of, you know, uh, showcase some of the highlights. I mean, you can see some of them already scrolling across the top of your screen. Uh, I don't really have to say much. I can just kind of let that, you know, let that all sort of go by. Um, and that's just a very, very, very small sampling. I don't know if you could see it too well on your screen. Uh, it's really, really light on my screen, so I can only imagine it's even lighter on yours. But if you see here, it says there are about 9,100 plus overall titles. And that means uh, that includes videos, that includes audio resources, and it also includes a few interactives such as games and, and things like that. So uh, that's our total right now. And, and when we first launched it, I, uh, about, I guess it's been about three or four years now. It started at something like 5,000 or somewhere around there, maybe even less. Uh, so it has grown quite a bit and you guys are coming in at a really good time because we are always looking out for new content to acquire uh, and add to resources such as Just for Kids, which you probably already have noticed that with Films on Demand and, and um, you know, even with Ferguson's, there's always something new coming. I mean, Ferguson's just got a huge um, uh, redesign and it looks really great. Just for Kids has not, but um, what we're going to talk about today, I think, is going to really, uh, you know, kind of help you jump in and, and, and be uh, familiar with it and figure out exactly what place it's going to have, you know, in your overall uh, life there at, at your institution. So. Um, uh, so I guess the first thing we should probably do is just talk a little bit about uh, getting started. Now, if you are if, if you have never ever gone into Just for Kids, you 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 saw it pop up on the list of resources, and you're like, oh yeah, whatever, okay, that's nice. Um, if you've not used it before, I would suggest as kind of a first step, just making sure that you click here and create your own personal account. Now that has no connection to anyone else's information or account or or you know uh, saved or favorite content. Content. This is just for you to be able to um, just kind of put away, you know, videos and, and audio resources and, and, and interactive things that things that you find along the way that you would like to be able to get back to. Um, I would definitely recommend that as a first step, just to help, you know, f uh, just get to give yourself a place to uh, put all of your favorite things. And, and that that account's going to be, you know, un again, inaccessible to anyone else. Uh, that's just going to be for you to be able to kind of, you know, tuck away some of the things that you find along the way that you really like. So uh, that's going to be step one. And then, you know, the next thing you'll probably want to do is just start uh, familiarizing yourself with the content. And, and I think the homepage does kind of a nice job of that. It gives you a really nice sneak peek at some of the, I think, probably best known uh, content. I mean, these, these are producers that you guys know very, very well. And, and you know, some, some of them that we have grown up with, you know, like Sesame Street, um, the electric company is one that's been around for quite a while. Reading Rainbow, you know, if you um, are at, at an age where you had little kids uh, back in, I guess it was what, the 70s or 80s, I can't remember exactly when those were new, but, uh, you know, Reading Rainbow started a while ago and it's still going on. LeVar Burton is still producing new content for um, not the Reading Rainbow imprint but i think he's got a couple of additional um a couple of additional lines that he's got going out there some some you know newer productions so that's a really really test time tested tried and true um uh source you know berenstain bears i mean doesn't take it doesn't take being in the site very long to figure out that there's a lot of stuff in here for you know all age uh, all ages of kids and as far as if you're looking for a kind of an age range, uh, this is a good a good way to kind of illustrate that. So the um, the younger end is probably going to be young, like kindergarten, um, first grade, kids who are old enough to 
use a computer and kind of know how to find stuff. And, and believe me, nowadays, it, it, I think they're coming out born knowing that stuff in some, in some cases, um, or they pick it up very, very early in life. So, you know, younger kids, kindergarten, first grade, um, just beginning school age, up through probably like maybe sixth or seventh grade, uh, you know, about, about 12. I think once they hit the teen years, this is going to start looking a little bit long, you know, a little bit young for them. They're gonna be like, oh, that's, you know, I, I taught seventh grade in my in my teaching career. Uh, and I can tell you that seventh graders think they're 20 something already, uh, even if they're not. So I would say maybe up to about 12 years old, maybe sixth grade, something like that's going to be a good, a good upper age range if you're, you know, looking for um, where this would fit best. So uh, the content is curated in a couple of different ways. First, we have these collections called subjects, and that's basically uh, going to align with kind of more of your school subjects. You know, you've got um, art, arts and music, you've got health and PE, uh, history, math, and so on. So that that's really kind of more on the um, the educational side. And, and when I think of just for kids, I kind of think of it as being almost a, a dual resource. You have the actual, the edu actual, <laughs> let's try that again. Uh, you have the educational content here with the, you know, more instructional type stuff. Uh, some of it is, is, is very, uh, you know, very directly classroom usable. And uh, there's some common core uh, math and, and language content, I believe. Um, I think there might be some, some uh, science stuff in there too. So it's, it's got more of that sort of educational, uh, you know, classroom type support. So if you are, you know, a public library and you have kids coming in after school, this would be a good, a good place to send them to say, hey, you know, what are you doing in science? What are you learning in math? There might be some great videos to, to help with that. So I'm going to pop into a couple of these just to kind of give you a bit of a, a, a wider lens on some of this stuff. Um, so as far as the ABCs and one, two, threes, it's again, it, as it would suggest, it's very basic. It's very, you know, um, introductory as far as reading and writing. Uh, there's, you know, getting ready to read. There's a series of videos on 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 letters and and numbers and things like that. Uh, here's a whole series of videos uh, from Canadian Broadcasting Corporation called Just for Fun. And and so there's you know little little um, little short videos talking about things having to do with our uh, you know with our bodies and things like that uh, numbers and counting. Uh, there's all these math specific videos. This is one of those Common Core producers. We have Common Core for kids. There's a few of them. You'll see them as we get over to the producers uh, content. Now, we're not going to go into every one of these, but there's a couple that I really want to point out. The, the Health and PE one is great. It's got great videos that you could use, you know, just kind of as a, um, as a, a you know, a, a tool for engaging kids through, through your website or, you know, if you've got, um, uh, if you, I, don't know, I don't know how many of you are actually back in a a physical setting at this point, but if your library is open, you know these could be these could be set up on your life your computers that you have for your younger patrons. Uh, there's a lot of different ways that you could use these. So there's videos under health and PE on uh, character building, on you know just general health, uh, eating habits, safety. Uh, there's also a selection of content for special needs. So I have two uh, special needs children of my own. Now they're older now. They're both teenagers. Um, one's in high school and ones in the uh, adult program, the 18 to 21 program. Um, but when, if you have younger kids, especially at that age, you know, just entering middle school, uh, they're probably, you know, get either they themselves are getting picked on, or you have kids that know uh, kids like that that are getting, you know, picked on and, and stuff like that. <clears throat> These are, are good to really help them figure out, you know, how to get along with, with, with kids who have special needs, or if they themselves are those kids, you know, how to deal with some of the stuff that they might be facing. Um, and then sports, of course, you know, kids are, are, are of course, going to be really active, and there's some great sports content as well. Uh, math, I mean, and, and again, we're not going to go into every single one of these, but I think you can kind of get the idea. And most of these videos are shorter clips, so you're not talking, you know, an hour video for an eight-year-old. I mean, these are these are pretty short. You know, they could be um, anything from, you know, a couple of minutes to maybe 10, 12, 15 minutes, and the vast majority of these are actually segments of longer full title. So uh, as we know, with, with, if we're using videos with kids in an educational type of setting, they're not going to sit through a half hour video on math. I mean, they're just, they're just not going to do it, right? I mean, they, they say that our, our uh, attention span is about equal to our age. And I, I don't know, I think uh, when, when you get into that 
early sort of middle school years, I think that probably gets cut in about half for a while until they get into high school and start getting more mature again, then it kind of catches up. Uh, so if you have kids that you want to show videos to, these are going to be perfect. I mean, they're really, you know, very short. And, and I'll show you when we get into more uh, of the conversation about different tools, uh, I'll show you how you can actually make a clip of your own. So you can you can actually take a full video and, and take a, like a small portion of it, five minutes, six minutes, two, whatever, and, and create a video from that that you can then share. So we'll talk about that in just a little bit. Um, I'll skip the TV shows and movies because we're going to talk about that over here. Uh, world languages, that's, the, that's a, a, another one that, you know, I, it seems to me that's the kind of subject that uh, the kind of subject matter that, that we're always looking for more content. You know, when, when I do um, trainings and webinars for some of our K-12 people, I can't tell you how many times I've gotten the question, well, do you have anything for Spanish or do you have anything for French or, you know, do you have anything for sign language? I mean, every once in a while I've gotten that question. It hasn't been very often. There's some great sign language videos in here, uh, different languages, you know, all the major languages, but also some videos for Japanese and Korean. You know, Korean is probably a language that has really grown a lot over the last few years worldwide because of K-pop and, and, you know, some of the, um, the entertainment coming out of South Korea. Uh, people are you know kids who probably never saw themselves learning korean all of a sudden are are picking up korean words and phrases and and they want to be able to understand the music that they're listening to uh mandarin chinese another one that you know it, it it's out there but it's not very common in, in when you're looking for foreign language content uh but we have a little bit of that and then spanish of course is the major one so those are some of the subjects uh the the kind of school subject or the educational content but what's really great about just for kids is you can also use it just to have kids be able to watch content on their own for fun that is safe that you know is going to be appropriate for their age group and with just for kids uh when it first was launched a few years ago it was actually embedded within one of our streaming video platforms and you had to have that video platform access in order to get to just for kids <clears throat> and then what we realized that was a couple of uh there were a couple of problems with that one you, you needed to have uh, a, a much larger subscription in order to be able to access that content. But two, if you're a kid, you know, you're going into this adult platform um, and, you, and looking at videos for kids. Now, 90% of kids can be trusted with something like that, but there is that small segment of, of, of you know, the population of young people that, hey, if they can get to it, they'll check it out. So uh, what's good about Just For Kids is it's its own platform. It doesn't allow access to any other resource that you have uh, either through NC Live or locally. It's its own thing. It doesn't allow kids to get into, for example, films on demand um, or any other you know, resources that you might have. So it's a very safe environment for kids. Uh, so then we have these popular categories. Now, this will be really quick. I just want to pop into a couple of these here. Um, my, one of my favorites is Books and Stories Brought to Life because when I think of uh, when I think of, of, of you know, language car content, especially for younger kids, there's a, a whole long tradition of reading to kids. Um, you know, you have read alouds when, when they are sort of a little bit, you know, young, a little bit younger on the younger side. Um, and I, I believe that shouldn't really stop even when they get older. I think you should always find reasons to read to kids. Um, when I was teaching high school, and I remember reading uh, passages from the narrative of the life of Frederick Douglass um, one year, and they were riveted. They, they, they couldn't stop listening. It was just something about, you know, hearing that story read aloud and, and just being able to almost put yourself in that situation. So same thing goes with stories that kids know, you know, you're the one probably reading to them or, you know, your, your juvenile librarian or, you know, your teachers in, at your local school district. Um, but these are great recordings or audio, a lot of these, uh, or they're video. So we have both, we have audio, and we have video. Uh, the videos are of, you know, all kinds of stories that are put into uh, visual format. And then we have a number of um, audio versions of famous stories, uh, mostly for younger readers, you know, picture books, uh, Clifford, that type of stuff. And then we have a few for older kids as well. Uh, and then we have this, this really um, kind of curious looking uh, collection here. We have um, TV shows for younger kids. Now, what we mean by TV shows isn't necessarily things that are, you know, widely available, popular broadcast type shows. Some of them are, but others may just be things that uh, appeared on TV at some point. So they, they might not necessarily be current series or 
uh, shows that had, you know, years and years on, on a TV, sh uh, on TV, but they were at some point uh, uh, put out in the broadcast world. The Webulous World of Dr. Seuss is a great reason, uh, great example of that. It's kind of a, you know, puppet version of the Dr. Seuss stories. Um, and that, now these are going to start looking really familiar. Super Y, my kids watched that when they were little. Um, wasn't really familiar with Ready, Jet, Go, but I think that's a bit of a newer, newer one. But there's Reading Rainbow again. Um, so we'll keep scrolling down here. Franklin the Turtle, I mean, come on, who doesn't love these guys, right? Um, uh, I don't know Choo Choo Bob, he's kind of new to me. Caillou, that's the one of those that you either kind of, it's sort of like in, in the Barney camp, you either love Caillou or you find the whole concept kind of annoying. <laughs> I mean, you know, that whatever, whichever one you fall into, um, I'm not asking for anyone to reveal that here, but uh, Caillou is, is really, really well known and very popular. And then of course, Arthur. So it gives you the idea of what we uh, have as far as, you know, TV shows for younger kids. Uh, for older kids, probably not quite as familiar. I mean, some of these are either newer series or, you know, very, very specific series about specific topics, um, you know, unlike kind of like a Franklin the Turtle, which is just sort of an entertainment uh, cartoon. Uh, but some of these, most of these I really hadn't heard of before starting to uh, talk about Just for Kids. Odd Squad, I did know. They, they're they pretty well known. They're pretty, probably one of the more well-known or better known uh, TV series from this collection. Uh, Atomic Betty, I didn't know, but I, I kind of think the concept is pretty cool. So there's a few a few recognizable names maybe in that older collection, but in the older kids TV shows collection, but not very many. Uh, and then we have the homework help section. So this is kind of a, a, a sort of a hearkening back to the more educational content. We've kind of curated that um, to, you know, kind of break down based on subject matter. So there's some biology uh, videos here. Some, there's a whole series of middle school common core math. So this is where we get kind of starting into the uh, slightly older kids. You know, we're not talking uh, little kids here anymore. History kids, government, I mean, you know, obviously 2020 was a huge um, year for politics. And so kids probably have a lot of questions. You know, how does all of that work? Well, how, you know, they're hearing stuff on the news. They're hearing their parents talk, um, you know, they may not be really paying full attention, but they're definitely hearing stuff and they want to know a little bit more about it. So uh, definitely recommend these. These are all from a producer called Wonderscape Entertainment. So if you're wondering, you know, where they where they came from, um, I think we I think that's one of our featured producers anyway. So you'll be able to get right to all of those um, in the producer uh, page. And then we have more Common Core math, we have Common Core Kindergarten Reading. Um, and, and this was a lot of these, the reason why we highlight those obviously is because Common Core is pretty, pretty still widely used in K-12. Uh, whatever's going to come in 2021, that those kind of may sort of fall um, away a little bit, and maybe we'll be focusing on other things instead. Uh, but for now, that's kind of where we are. Uh, so these are the uh, some of the featured producers that we chose just to kind of highlight, you know, where this great content is coming from. And again, you see these names, and you're like, wow, you know, we've got. I, I already mentioned Sesame Street. Uh, we actually did a great webinar with them a few years ago, where the people from Sesame Workshop came and joined us on a, on a Zoom webinar, a, a webinar rather, and they talked a little bit about, you know, what they were up to and some of the new content that was added that may still be out there somewhere. I think it might be um, in one of our uh, support centers somewhere. So I'll probably have to dig that out and maybe put it more public. I, I have a, uh, a YouTube channel that I'm working on because we just got rid of uh, an older uh, webinar platform that we had been using that where I stored all my stuff. So I'm kind of getting all that out. So I may put that on my um, my work YouTube channel and, and you'll be able to watch that. But anyway, um, Weston Woods is another one. They have great content for reading. You know, these are this is the producer that is really kind of got the market cornered on uh, both videos and audiobooks. Uh, you know, story story type audiobooks and videos. So they have over 200 videos uh, for all kinds of stories. You know, some of them are are, are really well known kids stories. Uh, there might be a few for older kids in there as well, but a lot of them probably lean and skew a little bit younger. Uh, but as as far as audio, the, that that's another great resource. I mean, again, you know, uh, we're all we all probably do a, a passable or a reasonably good job of reading to kids. But sometimes you just want to throw on an audio book because it's it's professional. There's probably sound effects along with it, and I don't know. You know, I haven't listened obviously to most of these, but I mean, you know, you're 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 giving your own voice a break, and they're actually really good. They're they're very well done. 
um, you know, again, some well-known stories, well-known picture books. Uh, you can scroll through the whole list if you want, and you can actually change the order to alphabetical if you're looking for something in, uh, in particular, uh, or you can go by newest to oldest, which is, I think, how it defaults right now. But you can kind of go through those and find some really, really fun titles that you might want to use, uh, you know, for kind of doing some kind of an oral reading situation or a story time or, or whatever you might want to do. And then Wonderscape is the one that I was just showing you on the uh, other page, on, on one of those other pages. So they not only do history videos, they do other content as well. Um, but there's a, they're, they're a great producer. We've been working with them for quite some time. And if you scroll down and you'll see some of the older videos, we've, we've actually been, uh, we've partnered with them for quite a few years now. So they've got about 170 titles. Many of them are those ones that we were looking at before. Uh, so I, I don't know if that's, if there's a separate category for government here. No, there's not. So if you go to history, if you, if you wanted to find some of those ones that we were looking at before, uh, you can see the under United States, that's probably where you're going to find most of those. And then so there, those are, you know, um, political videos, videos about individuals, and then some government videos in there, as we saw before. There, there's, there's, there's one, the judicial branch, legislative branch. So, I mean, it, it's kind of, you know, I think part of the experience of Just for Kids to uh, do some exploring and finding the things that you uh, think are going to be most valuable and, and whatever it is that you're doing. And I know some of you are probably, um, you know, you're probably uh, college librarians and you have maybe you're at a school where you have like a teacher program. You, you have like an elementary ed program or an early childhood education program. I mean, I would fire this thing up on day one and say, you know what? Uh, gone are the days where you do everything on a chalkboard or you hold up, you know, signs or you use a whiteboard. I mean, this is really how kids are doing a lot of their learning these days, uh, particularly during, you know, what's going on right now with a lot of things not being fully open. Um, I would say day one of, you know, any introductory elementary ed uh, class pop in just for kids and say, look, you know, this is something that you can use. I mean, uh, get them excited about becoming a teacher and, and, and getting into that, um, well, classroom. <laughs> Maybe someday soon, hopefully, we'll all be uh, back in classrooms again. But it's just a lot of really good stuff. Um, so a few things that I that I want to do now, I'll do a, a, a quick search because uh, I think there, there may be uh, some element, uh, let me do biology, I think that'll work. There may be some element of the uh, content that has not yet been brought forward, and that is the interactives. I've talked about videos, I've talked about audio. Interactives are a little bit harder to find because they're only going to, uh, they're only going to come up in searches. Unfortunately, there's, you know, if, if I can think of any um, improvement that I would probably want to make to Just for Kids, it's the fact that the interactives don't really have their own page. Um, I, I may be remembering this wrong, but I think they did in the very, very beginning when the, when the Just for Kids collection first launched. I, I seem to remember that you could actually go and look for uh, all the interactives. Now, what you can do, though, instead is if you go to the advanced search page, and this might be a quick way to do that, uh, you can actually select from the different types of, of resources, just select interactives, and, and then you can go here and you can select from either games and activities or learning modules. But I'm going to just do a, a an overall search for all of them here. I'm not going to select, you know, any subject matter in particular. So it looks like right now we've got 445 interactives. And by the way, once remember that when I first started the webinar, I said, hey, you're going to want to create your own account. Well, here's one reason why, because what I can do now with my brand new newly created account, I mean, mine's not new, I've had it for a while, but your brand new user account, you can go ahead, click that save search button, and then you can save this search as interactives. You can call it whatever you want. You can call it interactives, you can call it games and games and activities, um, you know, whatever you want to call it, you could just put it, I'm just going to put it in the, I think I might have a demo folder here. Uh, let's see, demo, Ava, de nope, that's not going to work. Uh, let's just put it in demo class. Uh, I'm just going to find a place for it. And then I, it's now part of my content. Now, what does that exactly mean? I think I already hit save. Let me just do that again. Yeah, it doesn't go away. You actually have to click out of it. Um, but what, what that means is once I have my account created, I have a portal here, a very um, a nice little collection called my content. And I can basically put all of my favorite stuff, whether it's a 
um, you know, whether it's a saved search, whether it's a playlist, didn't even talk about the playlist yet, uh, whether it's a custom segment, I did mention that earlier, uh, but you can save all of this stuff. And then once you create your, <laughs> looks like I've done that before, no, okay, I, I clicked it twice. So it actually saved twice, but if that happens, you can just delete one of them. So I'm not sure which one I did first, but I'm just gonna delete that. Um, but here's my interactive. So now when I click back on it, there are my 445 results. You can save any search you want, however general or specific that it might be. Um, but that's a good, you know, kind of a good, a good way to, to tuck aside or put aside things that you want to be able to use later, but you don't remember, you, you know, you, you really don't want to have to go back and find it again. Um, and the, a lot of these games, the games in particular, come from a company called Mr. Nussbaum's Learning Games and Reading Comprehension Activities. Very long word, usually we just call it Mr. Nussbaum and everybody knows what you're talking about. Um, but they're the ones that provide the majority of the actual learning games. So we've got 230 of those. I don't think they all come from them, but if not, then certainly most do. And there's a lot of really fun games. I mean, here's a here's one of my favorite games for maybe slightly older kids. You're talking about maybe upper elementary and middle and early middle school. And this is a game where you have to uh, you have to take people's orders. And what I love about this is not only are they learning fractions, they're also learning customer service because if you get any part of the order wrong, if you choose the wrong size or if you give them the wrong toppings, the customer gets a discount. And it's like, wait a minute, now I'm giving my money away because I'm not getting the order correct. So they first have to choose the size and then they have to follow the instructions for how much of each topping they have to put on the pizza. So they click the topping, then they click over here. And then it's, you know, I'm just going to do this randomly. It says one six mushrooms. I'm just going to do this way incorrectly. Um, let me put one extra mushroom in there and then bacon will just fill that up. Now, what happens if I don't do this correctly is I go ahead, I send the order and it says, oops, wrong pizza topping proportion. The client just got a $2 discount because they were unsatisfied. So, you know, you, kids are learning a lot of different things here uh, in the kind of in the within the, the realm of, um, you know, the academic stuff, but also kind of real world skills as well. So, you know, if, if we had, I don't know, a few more hours, we could talk about all the different ways that you could use just for kids and all the different directions you could take it in. Uh, we don't. So let's go ahead back to our original search for biology, I believe it was. So whenever you're searching, you'll see that the search results are divided into three different categories. And there may not be audio or interactives. There are pretty much always going to be videos because that's the, the bulk of the collection. Uh, but if you do have audios, you can go over there and you could filter the audio based on either subject or other things. Interactive, same thing. Uh, right now, we only have the, because I searched biology, we only have the lessons. Now, these are, again, um, these are more for either upper elementary or middle school students. So I think the the base or the basic lessons are for grades three to five, and then the inter, there's intermediate lessons, which I don't know if they're actually in this collection, but they do have them uh, for grades six to eight. I I think maybe in just for kids only the basic lessons are here, but they they're really easy to use. Uh, kids are pretty much going to be able to do these on their own if they just need some extra practice. Uh, this one is all about the human organ systems. So this has the um, the, the lesson objectives, it also tells kids what they should already know, because if they are not here yet, then they're going to maybe want to go back and do a previous lesson. And these are all probably being monitored by somebody, a teacher, a, a tutor, you know, a librarian, somebody is actually kind of keeping an eye on the kids as far as what they're doing. And then once you get into each lesson, most of them have either some kind of a multimedia piece, like a video or an, or an audio component. Maybe there's like a, a read aloud type of thing. And then at the end, they have to actually cre uh, complete some kind of a lesson. So there's a little video there and they have to come down here and complete each sentence. So uh, blank, the diaphragm contracts. And then it says, well, when a person either inhales or exhales, um, which one is it? Let's see if we're correct. Correct. Ah, so we're right. We got it. We got one right. And then they can go through and they can do all of those. And if they want, they can they can completely start over. It's not like you know these are like one and done. Where once they do it, um, they can't do it again, or it's 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 over. But back to our search results page. 
Uh, you can also filter over here, again, either newest to oldest or alphabetically. And then every page has a page link. And when you're doing searching, you can also export your uh, results to a spreadsheet. So if let's say I wanted to do some searches to help out you know, my staff um, or my patrons or my instructors, you could go ahead and create spreadsheets of each you know, search that you've done to be able to say, hey, this is how many we have of this. This is what some of the titles are. So you can do that right on your own. And I point that out just because every once in a while we get the question, you know, um, what titles are included or what what's in the plot, you know, what sort of things are in the platform. So just be aware that you can actually do that on your own. Uh, let me pick a, a, a video here. Let's do Wonderscape's Science Kids Biology and we'll go on to the player page. Um, so oh, now we have to pick a, an actual uh, all about animal cells and plant cells that works. So here's a video uh, all about animal cells and plant cells. Most of the videos in the platform have both a list of individual segments. And by the way, you can, you can actually take these segments and share them individually. Whoops, let me mute that. I mean, the music is nice, but I don't want it playing while we're talking here. Um, I mean, these are great videos. You can see the high quality, you know, I mean, I don't know if, if it's coming through in, in, the, in the webinar, but you know, these are, are relatively new videos, a lot of them. Uh, and even the older ones are, are, are still pretty good quality. This one is just from a couple of years ago. I mean, it looks great. You know, it's, it's clear. Uh, it, it, it's very well defined as far as what's covered. And then the other thing that you'll find in most videos is an interactive transcript. So you can take this video. Uh, you can, you know, you can actually download the transcript if you want. Although I don't know, you guys are probably not doing that now because of, of COVID. But, you know, if you've got people at home using Just for Kids, maybe they want to do that. Maybe, you know, some kids would like to download download the transcript and use it as kind of a study guide, you know, as they, uh, they watch the video, but maybe they want to use it to study or they want to use it for their, you know, if they have an assignment to do on it or whatever. Um, there's a lot of really good reasons to do that, but you'll notice that the transcript also follows along. And then down in the bottom of each video, you have a few, few options. The first one is your share option, which allows you to send a link to any video in the platform to someone via email. Uh, we also have uh, other ways to post it. You can take that record URL and post it on your web page. Uh, the, there's also the individual segment URL. So be sure to note that. You, you'll see in, when you're looking at a video like this, if you clicked on a segment, you'll have the full video and then you'll also have that specific segment that you clicked on or that you're in. Just be aware so that you know, you're not sharing the, the full title when you really only wanted to share the segment. Uh, you can also use the embed code uh, in say a learning management system of some sort, you know, if you're using any kind of external software, that's that's a, a good way to use. I'm just going to pause that here, uh, and then the add to gives you some additional choices as well. You can add videos to your favorites. You can create folders for them. Uh, you can also add videos to a playlist, which means the either the full video. This one is. Um, and I, I've already I've already been proven wrong here because I said most of them are pretty short. Um, I should say that the again I think I did say the full videos are, are are definitely longer, but they all have segments so that when you're starting to click around, you might wind up on a segment page. Um, but keep in mind that you can then take that specific segment and share that without the rest of the video. But anyway, you have your ads to uh, if you want, you can add the full video to your playlist or all the individual segments, or you can start selecting specific segments. So lots of different choices there. Um, the citation for every video if they're using it for, for research. And then the last little um, tool here is your segment tool. And this is what I was, I think, mentioning a little bit earlier, where, you know, let's say you're, you're, you have this video, it's 23, almost 24 minutes long. Now, when you go back to the segments, you see that the segments are usually about three to six minutes, you know, there's 321, there's 456. This one's a little bit longer at 625. Um, this one is five and a quarter or 526, something like that. They're fine, but I really wanna take the animal cells and the plant cells and put them together in one full segment. I don't want kids to have to, you know, see the individual segments or watch the entire thing um, in, in its entirety, all 23 plus minutes. So you can take that uh, video and you can find wherever your segment starts. So let's say you click there. Uh, looks like 328 is where we started. So you could put 328 and then find your uh, where you wanted to end. So I wanted to end at the end of plant cells. So I'm gonna click on cell division to give me the end point there. So looks like about 1145, so let's say that. 
11.45. Now, what you do here, then you just give it a title, uh, whatever you want to call it, you know, call it, I don't know, cells, let's just say. Uh, you're going to want to grab your thumbnail image, and that can be from wherever, wherever you are in the video. So the first uh, thing was animal cells. So we'll stop where that's on the screen, and then you can grab that as your thumbnail. And then wherever you are, that's going to be your thumbnail image. You can skip the description and then create your segment. Now, when you go to your my content, you have you should have at least. Uh, this has sometimes not worked for me in a live webinar, so I just want to point out if it's not here for some reason, um, that could be why. There it is. Nope, that's an older one. Uh, yeah, I don't I, I don't see it. I don't. I think we may have put it inside a folder. But anyway. Um, whatever, it, 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 that's the process that you would use. And I'm not gonna try to find it now. I think I might've deposited it into a folder, um, but that's the process that you would use to create a custom segment. Now, all of that is is gonna be, you know, the kind of things that, that really make just for kids a regular part of whatever it is that you're doing. I mean, again, we, we could spend hours talking about all these different things. Uh, I What my goal today was really, uh, was to just give you a highlight reel of some of the things that I think you are going to most want to do. Uh, the other little thing you might notice here is the casting tool. I mean, this is pretty standard on most video pages nowadays, most, you know, video players and things like that. Uh, you're able to cast videos to a smart TV or to a, a smart board, or if you have, you know, a projection system on your network, uh, along with this device, you could stream it, uh, or you can cast it up to, you know, your, your, your projector and your screen or whatever. So that's something just to keep aware of as well. And then um, I want to make sure that I leave a little bit of time at the end here for questions, but I also wanted to just very quickly point out one other very important um, piece here, which is that if you create a playlist, and I, I think this is actually from uh, let's see. Yeah, this is not from Just for Kids. So um, if I actually also have on this computer. I have a um, uh, an account with our stream or with our public library streaming video platform. So a lot of what's in here is probably from that. Um, so I'm not going to be able to necessarily show you a playlist here. But uh, what you can do with a playlist is you can actually share it. And what's great about that the playlist sharing feature, unlike anything else, it, whether you're sharing a video, uh, a full video title, or a segment, or a custom some clip that you made yourself. The, the thing that all of those other things have in common is that the person would be required to log into the plot to the to the account. Now you guys have statewide access, so it's probably not an issue. But you know, if you're dealing with somebody who just moved into the state and is does not have their own you know access information yet, they have no idea what Just for Kids is. They can still watch that playlist and not have to worry about logging in. And uh, the other good thing about that is you can share those playlists outside of you know your own customer base or your um you know your your population or your 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 um your district or whatever and don't, you don't have to worry about people accessing the, your subscription. They can only view the playlist titles that you share. So that's one thing just to keep in mind. Another really fun thing with the playlist you could do is you can actually create a video of yourself and upload it to your uh, Just for Kids account and then have that be the first video that people watch. So you can do a little fun thing where you introduce the titles or the, the videos rather and you know talk about what they should be looking for. Kind of a nice little way to engage people, especially now while we are not uh, able to necessarily do everything in person. Okay, so we've got a few minutes here. Um, I want to make sure that I give you guys some time to uh, ask questions. I don't know, Devin, maybe you have some questions already for me, uh, as I'm sure you've been monitoring the chat while I've been just kind of going on and on here. <laughs> hey, so I don't see any questions yet in the chat. Um, folks, feel free to submit them. Yeah, it's usually it's so much to take in, especially if it's somebody's first time seeing it. <laughs> so they might not yet know what they don't know, right? <laughs> I think another thing to keep in mind, too, is especially for our public libraries, um, if any of your youth services departments or coordinators um, weren't able to attend one of our workshops in the last few months, um, letting them know about Just for Kids and the um, story times that are available in the platform, I think it's a good way to kind of offload some of that work that I know a lot of library workers are doing right now. Um, if you have the ability to just kind of embed certain videos on a page and share them out, um, 
you have the performance rights for those. And so um, that is something to keep in mind and forward that to the, to the right people. Yeah, thank you for mentioning that. I forgot about the public performance op uh, 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 piece to that. I, I, I've done so many of these things in person and that sort of just kind of comes out, you know, when I'm naturally in front of people. So thank you, that's a good point. Well, I mean, uh, after this webinar, if anybody has questions, Devin, feel free to pass them my way. I know sometimes people think of something afterwards. You know, I, I've done that many, many times. Like, wait, I remember now. So you can just pass those on to me and I'll be happy to send responses. Yeah, do you want me to, is it okay if I include your email in the chat so that people can stay Yeah, ab absolutely. Right. So, um, if we don't have any questions, I'm happy to start the lunch break early. Um, we'll be coming back together at one o'clock for um, Gail in Context Biography, another new resource um, that we launched earlier this month. And so I'm gonna copy that link for the next session in the chat um, and feel free to head out. All right, thanks so much, Angel. Uh, you're welcome. Hey, any idea if there's uh, gonna be live trainings coming up anytime or is that still way, way out of, who knows, right? <laughs> we're not We're not entirely sure. Um, I know that right now, because we're part of NC State, they're kind of trying to figure out um, who are the essential people that they need on campus as the semester starts up this week. Um, and then hopefully, with the weekly testing that they're doing, um, we'll get more and more of a chance to get back into the office and doing things live, but. That's great. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're all ready for that now. It's been, yeah. it's been almost a year, you know? I know, it's a lot of time to be spent working from home. Yeah, definitely. All right, well, I will let you go. See y'all later and have a good lunch break. All right, thanks, Devin. Yep. So long, everybody. See ya.